welcome to episode 9. As you can see, the robotic arm is really coming together now. We have just installed joint 3 at the end of the main arm, which acts as the elbow of the arm and consists of a complex assembly of bearings with a common keyed shaft and belt system located underneath the 3D printed side cover, connecting this joint 3 assembly to the J3 motor. I really hope that you've been enjoying the build series so far and would love to hear your comments or questions about the build. So in this episode, we'll be going through the installation of the Joint 3 motor, the belt system that transmits the J3 motor movement up to the J3 assembly, and the creation of the Joint 3 assembly itself, and then finally covering it up with the 3D printed side cover. So let's get building. As already mentioned, the Joint 3 assembly has three distinct components. The Joint 3 motor and motor mount, the joint itself, and the belt connecting the two. This results in a large bill of materials, including the 3D printed AR4 logo, side cover, and a 3D printed side spacer with inbuilt cable routing that provides a nice cosmetic finish, but also protects users from the belt. At the top of the arm, we require the Joint 3 bearing cup with the 30204 bearing, the J3 spindle with the 35 by 52 by 4 thrust bearing, two thrust bearing washers, and some bearing grease. This is held into the top of the arm with six M3 by 20 flathead screws. We also have the Joint 3 spindle retainer which holds the 30204 bearing in place, a M3 by 4 set screw, and a 50 millimeter long keyed shaft. At the bottom of the arm, we have the J3 motor mount and assorted screws as shown on the screen, and the L10 pulleys and the 214L belt, which will connect the bottom of the arm to the top of the arm. During this build of the Joint 3 assembly, I do deviate from the AR4 build manual provided by Chris Annan, which is linked in the description below. I skip forward to page 147 and start with the simple task of super gluing the AR4 3D printed logo into the side cover. This logo was 3D printed with white ASA, whereas the side cover used the PLA Magic Dark Purple Filament, which provides a kind of glitter finish when you see it from different angles. So it's a dual color PLA with both blue and purple. I've utilized this filament across the AR4 side cover, the smaller Joint 5 arm cover, and the cover of the electronics enclosure at the Joint 1 base. For all the structural parts in the project, I used PETG carbon fiber with 100% infill on a bamboo X1 carbon. With the AR4 logo now setting in the glue, we can turn our attention to the Joint 3 motor assembly. Motors already come with the key underneath this yellow cap However, it's not properly installed in the shaft, and I've found this quite difficult to press the key properly into the shaft. However, using a set of properly tuned vice grips, I can quite firmly press down and use that mechanical leverage to press the key into the shaft. Hot tip, you can use the Joint 3 spindle retainer to check the alignment and installation of the key. We can now turn our attention to the Joint 3 motor mount. So the motor mount has these countersunk M4 holes that will connect the motor mount to the motor using four M4 by 10 flathead screws. As you can see here, we have the wires pointing out to the left. However, when the tension screws are pointed towards us, we actually want the wires to point out to the right hand side. So turn this 180 degrees to what you see on the screen so that the wires are pointed out to the right hand side of the whole assembly. Unfortunately for me, I didn't realize this mistake until I'd installed the Joint 3 motor onto the arm, connected the belt, and then went to route the wires. It's not a massive mistake, and it can be easily rectified as I later did. However, it does make it a little bit harder for all of the cable routing to be neat if the motor is pointed in the wrong direction. Regardless of the motor orientation, the process of mounting it is the same with all M4 by 10 flathead screws being installed from above and tensioned with an Allen key. After this, we can then install the two M3 by 14 cap head screws, which are used to tension the belt. These go into the threaded holes at the bottom of the slots and will be used to press against the bolts holding the joint three motor mount to the arm and then push off from that tensioning the belt. 
rotating the main robotic arm assembly around such that the joint two motor is pointing towards me, I can now take the joint three motor and install the long shoulder L10 pulley that comes in the hardware kit. I partially install an M3 by four set screw into the side of the pulley, making sure it does not protrude out into the shaft bore. I can then line up the keyways and press down firmly onto the pulley to install it onto the motor shaft, but making sure that it doesn't go too far and is lined up so that the end of the shoulder of the pulley is lined up with the outside of the motor mount. Once this is done, I can then tighten up that M3 by four set screw before installing the motor into the main robotic arm assembly. We can now mount the joint three motor to the main robotic arm assembly. It's at this point that you can see that the wires are in the wrong orientation as they should be pointing down rather than up. To join the J3 motor to the main robotic arm assembly, we use four M4 by 20 socket head screws, along with four washers installed on those as well. Holding this single-handedly while trying to install those screws is quite difficult, and there's not a huge amount of space to work with, especially on the underside of the motor. Don't do these up too tightly, as we still need to tension the belt using the tension screws in the J3 motor mount. Once I've got the first M4 by 20 cap head socket screw in place, it's a little bit easier now that the motor's held there, so I can go through and tighten the others by hand and then lightly tighten with an Allen key. As with almost all of the bearing fittings within this project, it's a very tight tolerance for the fitting of the 30204 bearing race. To make it easier, I put it into the freezer, bringing it down to negative 18 degrees Celsius which allows it to slip into the J3 bearing cup with just a light bit of pressure. Once this warms up though, it will have a very tight tolerance. A short while later, the 30204 bearing has warmed up and is now at room temperature. This makes it an interference fit within the J3 bearing cup and we can install this at the top of the robotic arm. There are numerous pre-drilled and tapped holes at the top of the robotic arm and so we rotate the joint three bearing cup until we get a matching mounting pattern of six holes. We can then use an Allen key to install the six M3 by 20 flathead screws. With the joint three bearing cup installed at the top of the arm, we can now take this machined aluminium joint three spindle that comes in the AR4 hardware kit and install the 50 millimeter long, eight millimeter keyed shaft, along with the two millimeter by two millimeter by 50 millimeter long key that holds the whole assembly together. So lining up the eight millimeter shaft with the key in the, with the key in the joint three spindle, this is made easier by coming in on a diagonal, then pressing the whole assembly together and pushing down from above. Doing this on a flat hard surface will line up the key and the shaft with the bottom of the joint three spindle. Putting the joint three spindle down on the hard surface and pressing down again will make sure that the key and the shaft are flush with the base of the joint three spindle. This won't hold in place, however, unless we actually install the M3 by four set screw. So before installing the thrust washer, we're actually going to install this small set screw into the side of the J3 spindle to hold the shaft and key in place. Pre-installing the M3 set screw onto the end of a 1.5 millimeter Allen key, we can easily screw it into the side of the joint three spindle. It's really important at this point that we have the J3 spindle pressed down on that hard surface, making sure that it's flush with the base of the joint three spindle and the key shaft and joint three spindle are all held together firmly with this set screw. So we'll just check that it's flush at the bottom again. And now we can move on to the thrust bearing. The installation of the thrust bearing is super simple. We firstly install one of the thrust bearing washers into the joint three spindle then the thrust bearing itself goes over the top of that and it's a pretty loose fit in there. We can then use some inox grease over the top of the bearings before installing the last bearing washer and then we'll rotate this around once it's in the top of the arm 
to properly spread the grease throughout the bearing. We can now take the joint three bearing assembly with the thrust bearing installed and push it through the top of the joint three bearing cuff at the top of the arm with the joint three spindle coming from the side where the motors are. With that in place, we can then fit the 30204 bearing, which will be fitted over the top of the shaft here with the taper facing inward. And it's a little bit difficult to get in, but I did warm this up in the oven roughly to about 60 degrees Celsius, which does help get it over the top of the shaft and into the end of the arm. Once this is properly seated, we can use the joint three spindle retainer which fits over the end of the shaft. And again, the shaft, the keyway on the shaft can be slightly sprung away from the shaft. So I slide the spindle retainer over on an angle to get it over the top of the key first, and then can push it back along the shaft towards the 30204 bearing race. Once properly seated, the joint three spindle retainer has these four holes which line up with four threaded holes at the top of the joint three spindle shaft. Tightening up these M3 by 10 flat head screws, pull on the spindle retainer which then pulls on the inner race of the 30204 bearing, pulling it back into the taper while simultaneously also pulling the joint three spindle and bearing assembly from the other side of the arm tight against the robotic arm itself. This is providing the tension that pulls the two assemblies on each side of the arm together. And then we're left with the shaft protruding from the end, onto which we'll install the pulley for the belt assembly to transfer the rotation from the joint three motor. Making sure to not over tighten these screws so that the spindle retainer doesn't press too hard on the bearings. I can check that the bearings are running properly with only two screws installed before applying some Loctite to the screws and then installing all four screws. Finally, we can complete the mechanical assembly of joint three with the installation of both the L10 short shoulder belt pulley as seen here at the top of the arm and the 214L belt. To install the L10 pulley, we align the keyway with the key of the J3 shaft and then press it on until the bottom of the shoulder is lined up with the outer face of the main robotic arm. After the set screw is nice and tight, we can now bring the 214L belt into the picture. This belt obviously has a set distance that it will traverse between the two pulleys and you want it extremely tight. To make sure that there's high precision and almost no backlash uh, in this belt system. So to do this, I loosen off the bolts on the joint three motor mount, put the belt onto the bottom motor mount pulley and then pull it up the arm and slide it onto the L10 pulley at the top of the arm. Once this is done, I can then press the joint three motor down and install those bolts again. As you can see here, at this point, I've already turned the motor around to have the correct wire orientation. And with the motor correctly oriented and the belt correctly tensioned, we can now tighten up these M3 tension screws here pushing against the, the M4 mounting bolt in the slot to further tension the belt. So I did both of these up in an alternating fashion to make sure that both sides were square. Now that the belt is correctly tensioned, we can go through and tighten up the M4 socket head screws that hold the J3 motor mount to the main robotic arm, making sure that these are well torqued and that the motor mount is square to the arm. Having installed the joint three bearing assembly, the joint three motor and the belt itself, and making sure that the belt is correctly tensioned, we can now cover this up with the joint two side spacer. This is 3D printed out of PLA with an integrated cable routing channel that points towards the back of the robotic arm and with the channel being exposed on the side where the joint three motor is. Over the top of this goes the joint two side cover, which is the 3D printed part into which we super glued the AR4 logo earlier. We can then use one of the M3 by 30 pan head screws to connect the side cover to the spacer, which is easier to do off the arm. Pressing it through, 
and then lining it up with one of the pre-drilled and tapped holes within the aluminium arm itself. Using a Phillip head screwdriver, we can install one of the screws at the top of the arm, which will hold the side cover and spacer in place, before then installing another screw in the bottom right hand side, which will stop it from swinging about and make it much easier for us when we install the remaining 14 screws to hold the side cover and side spacer onto the arm. This is a bit of a difficult operation uh, by yourself, obviously trying to hold all of the three components in place so you can get the screw perfectly lined up. However, once it's done, you get to admire the arm with the cover on. Using a Phillip head screwdriver, we can now install all 16 of the M3 by 30 pan head screws to hold the AR4 side cover in place. Due to this being 3D printed, sometimes the holes are a little bit tight, so it's worth drilling these out beforehand rather than having to thread them by hand. As always, thank you very much for watching the episode. I hope that you found it useful. Please like and subscribe for more robotics content. We'll also be adding some 3D printing in upcoming episodes and looking to complete the arm in the next month.